Hey there, my name's Drew Rashler, and in today's video, I'm going to continue this monitor engineering series and talk about pilot tone inside of wireless in-ear systems. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now I have set up here a Sennheiser IEM G3 and that is the in-ear that I usually mix to here in my studio. And this is a very popular in-ear that is out in the market and there's a brand new G4 version. and. And this pilot tone thing that I'm going to be talking about today is with every in-ear system that's an analog in-ear system, which is most of the in-ears that are out there. And the way that these in-ears work is that there's a little pilot tone that turns on and tells the receiver, the receiving pack, that, hey, I'm a, I'm a transmitter and I am transmitting. And so what that pilot tone does is it allows the receiver belt pack to unmute and then your musician can now hear what's happening in their mix. Without the pilot tone, that would cause uh, issues. For instance, if the transmitter ever turned off, then that would leave this belt pack to be receiving just straight up noise, and the noise floor would go crazy high in that in-ear system. And if you've ever had the chance to find a very old school FM wireless microphone, try this. You know, turn on the receiver, turn the squelch all the way to zero, and then turn on your microphone and you're talking into it and it's nice and clear and then you turn off the microphone and all of a sudden there's this huge burst of noise. And that's the same type of thing that would happen with these in-ear systems if there wasn't this pilot tone because the pilot tone allows that body pack to say, hi, unmute please. Now this pilot tone happens to be at 19 kilohertz. And it also ends up separating our stereo mix. So that pilot tone is really important because not only does it say unmute please, but it also says here's the right, here's the left. Now it's a little bit more complicated than that, but what ends up happening is this 19 kilohertz pilot tone happens to fall in our audio spectrum. 19 kilohertz is just slightly less than 20 kilohertz. And so that means that it is in the middle of our audio spectrum. So if we happen to excite that frequency more than we want to, then that can actually cause a bunch of wireless dropout issues. And this wireless dropout issue can sound like volume going in and out. It can sound like your stereo spectrum compressing into mono and then back out into stereo and then back into mono. And it can cause high frequency issues to just start going crazy. There's a bunch of things that a wireless in-ear system can happen when you have this pilot tone frequency pegged. And I actually have a test set up here. So I have my Sennheiser IEM plugged into a stereo DI that's going into my recording here. And so I'm wanting to show you what this ends up sounding like when we have these pilot tone issues. And then I'm going to talk about how we can counteract and fix that. So here is just some pink noise that I have going here. And then I have my microphone. Hey, check, 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 check. So I can go ahead and turn this up and we can get a pretty good sense of sound from this setup. So I have my, my pink noise and my vocal microphone. And here on Mixbus 1, I have a 19 kilohertz sine wave. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this 19 kilohertz tone up. And what we'll notice is that as I'm turning this up, our meters on the Sennheiser are starting to get pegged. Now I'm only at negative 12 on my meter, but over on my Sennheiser transmitter, it is almost pegged to the top. And so if I continue to take this up a little bit more, it will start peaking. Now, at this point, as it's sitting here peaking, my microphone will come in and out as I'm talking. So if I brought this down a little bit, it's not going to be peaking, but then if I brought it up, it's gonna be peaking again, and that is causing the volume to decrease. In fact, if I turned this up even more, the mix in this body pack would completely go away. So as I 
continue to raise this up, it is getting quieter and quieter and quieter. And I am now at, you know, negative four on my meters on my console. And this Sennheiser pack is peaking all the way. And you can't even hear this microphone in the in-ear transmitter. So if I bring this back down, all of a sudden the mix comes back. We can hear everything and everything's back to normal. But then maybe a cymbal crash comes and it peaks that up again. And all of a sudden, boom, there goes the mix again. So this pilot tone is really important that we keep things away from it. Now, I bet some of you guys are thinking, well, I mean, I love to have that high-end information, so I don't want to remove all of that high-end information. Well, I do happen to have an EQ curve that you can apply to the output buses of your console before it goes to your in-ears that will help keep this in check. And that way you will never have this problem down in the road in the future. But what I wanna show you here is an audio frequency response of in-ears. So PSM 1000s from Shure go from 35 hertz all the way up to 15 kilohertz. PSM 900s, same thing. PSM 700s, 50 to 15 kilohertz. PSM 300s, 38 to 15 kilohertz. And then we come to the Sennheiser. So the EWIEM G3s and G4s happen to have the same frequency response of 25 hertz up to 15 kilohertz. Now notice, all of these have 15 kilohertz listed as the maximum frequency. And that's because of the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, when they created this MPX, this multiplexing audio, it made it so that there was a limitation to the maximum frequency that could be transmitted out into this RF protocol. And so that happens to be 15 kilohertz. So there's no point in putting any audio past 15K because the receivers can't actually hear it. They won't be able to reproduce the frequencies. So even if you try and boost it up, it's not going to come through on the in-ears. And if you do happen to boost everything above 15K, then we're going to fall into this 19 kilohertz tone issue that it is. So whenever I am mixing monitors, I always go to my bus and I go and apply an EQ curve on the mix buses that are feeding my in-ears. So for instance, I have mix bus three and four here, and this is a stereo linked pair, and this is going to be what I send to my in-ears. And so what I'll end up doing is I'll grab my EQ and I'll take my low band and I will set this to a low cut. And when I set this EQ, I will set this frequency to 35 hertz, or in this case, 36 hertz. Because again, all of these happen to be around that 35 hertz cutoff. So you could go even up a little bit more. So we could go up to 40 hertz and that'd be fine. Now, additionally, I will take my fifth band of my EQ and I will go apply a 19 kilohertz notch filter. And so what I'll do is I'll take my frequency and I'll take it all the way up as close to 19 kilohertz as I can get, which in this case is 19K.32. And I'm going to take my Q and I'm going to make it super narrow. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have it set to a PEQ rather than a VEQ because on the Behringer X32, the PEQ is narrower than the VEQ. And then what I'll do is I will take this and cut it all the way down. So I will take this all the way down to negative 15 dB on this cut. The very next thing that I will do is I will take my high band and I will set this to a high cut. And I will set this to be at 15 kilohertz. Because again, none of our audio frequency response of these in-ears is going to go above 15K. So I will then take this and I will copy this and paste this on all of the rest of my transmitting mix buses that go to in-ears that are wireless. 
Now, if there's a wired in-ear, then obviously I'm not going to be applying this because maybe the audio frequency response of that wired in-ear can actually reproduce some of these frequencies above 15K. But I'm wanting to make sure that my vocalist and band that's on these wireless in-ears is going to have the best possible mix that they can get. And by creating this EQ curve of a 19 kilohertz cut and then a high cut of 15K and a low cut about 40 Hertz, then that is going to ensure that this wireless transmitter is going to have the best audio quality for that musician. I hope this video was helpful for you today. If you do happen to have any questions, feel free to post in the comment section down below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I would make on monitor engineering or any of the consoles that are out there, please drop that in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are going to be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com where I have more articles, tips, and tricks. Thank you so much.